Hello everyone, in this video we will try to understand how to find the frequency distribution and the mean of the data if we are working on a large scale data. So for example, we have up to 50 respondents and we want to find out what is the frequency distribution. How many people answered 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1 in some questions. Then it would be a tedious task to do it manually. That's why I suggest that you use Excel so that the data will be 100% accurate and it will be much better, efficient, and faster. So you can see that I arranged the data in this way and I suggest that you do the same so that the data will be easier for you to work on. So let's proceed with the first step. Highlight all the data, all the cells that will contain our data for the frequency distribution. So type in equals, then type in the word frequency, open parentheses, then highlight the data for the question that you wanted to find out how many frequency distribution do they have. So let's highlight this one. Make sure that you highlight it from the top up to the bottom of the data. And then type in comma. After you type in the comma, highlight this part because we wanted to find out how many answers 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this contains the 5, the 4, the 3, the 2, and the 1. Then close parenthesis. Next step would be adding a dollar sign for all this part. For H5, for the number for the H again, and for the number. The reason why we include dollar sign means that even if we go to question two, question three, so on and so forth, still the data or the bins array for this one will be 543 to one. It will not change. So only the question will change, but the bins array or the 543 to one will not change. Then before you enter, make sure that you click Control, Shift, then Enter. Then, you will see that the frequency distribution for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 for question 1 is already there. Now, instead of typing or instead of uh, going to step 1 for question 2, 3, and so on and so forth, you can just highlight this one and then drag up to the last question that you have. You will notice that they will have their frequency distribution as well. Next step would be finding the mean. In finding the mean for the Likert scale data, it is different from the usual mean that we use. In the usual mean, you will just add this and then divide by how many respondents. That is not the case for the Likert scale of data. So if you do that, the answer will be wrong. So this is how you find the mean for the Likert scale of data. First thing you type in equals and then open parentheses then click the cell for 5 and then multiply by 5 since we wanted to find out the mean for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 for question 1. So 26 and then multiply by 5. So that's it. Next is plus. Click the next cell times 4 because we are in the 4. Plus, then click this one times 3 because we are on the 3. Next, click plus this one multiplied by 2 because we are on 2. Then plus, click this one, or you can multiply by 1, or you can just add it because multiplied by 1 is just the same. And then close parenthesis, divided by how many respondents that we have. In this case, we have 50 respondents, so we will divide it by 50. Then click enter. So you will see that we have 3.72 mean for question 1. So instead of typing all the formula for question 2, 3, and so on, we can just drag it up to the last question that we have. Next step, to find the overall mean for all the questions in your data, you can just type in equals and then add all of the mean for question 1, 2, to the last. Let's have this. And then let's add the next mean, add the next mean, add to the last mean that you have. Divided by 3, because we have 3 questions here. Assuming that you have 10 questions, then you will have divided by 10. So, let's add divided by 3 because we only have questions 
1, 2, and 3. Then click enter. So we know that the mean is 3.62667. Or if we rounded it off for in two decimal places, we will have 3.63. Now, how are we going to find out if the frequency distribution for all the data is correct? We just have to find the sum. All this, this, and this. So, sum, close parentheses and open parentheses, and then highlight this one, and then enter. If the answer is 50, which is equal to the number of respondents that you have, then the answer is correct. If it's not, then some of the data is missing. Now, how do we present this data on a table? For us to present it in a table, this is my preferred way of presenting the data in a table. Okay, so I arranged it in question one, two, and three because we only have three questions. So let's see. Question one, how many answered five? So we have 26. So I will just type in 26. How many answered four? We have six. How many answered three? So we have one. How many answered two? We have 12. And how many answered five is yeah, five here. And then just copy the mean, 3.72. So you just have to fill in this table with the one that you have here. So that is how you find the frequency distribution and the mean using Excel. You will see that it's much faster and much organized and the accuracy is 100%. Thank you and that's all.